Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number four, and today we will be discussing building types. Now, before I start talking about building types, let me quickly explain to you why building types are important. In short, the bigger and taller buildings are, the higher the risk of life safety in case of an emergency, such as fire. And with that in mind. You can see the importance of the materials and fire rating of building systems. Let me give you an example. The most common material used in construction for a typical residence is lumber or wood, and we all know what happens to wood when it catches fire. Not only does it catch fire, but it spreads quickly. Yet, using lumber or wood, such as two by four studs or wood trusses, are perfectly acceptable for these types of structures. The reason is that the risk of life loss in a structure that is this small is relatively low. In most instances, people can evacuate the residents relatively quickly. Now, let's think of a building that is in the complete opposite end of the spectrum, a high-rise building. Let's use a building that is 30 stories tall as an example. In this type of building, because there would be more people in the building and the building is so much bigger and taller. It would take a much longer time to evacuate the building in case of an emergency. Can you imagine if this high-rise building was built completely out of wood? There would definitely be a major loss of life in case of fire. That is why, in this type of building, it would be logical to use materials that are much more resistant to fire, such as steel or concrete. But using concrete and steel alone doesn't always provide the protection you need. That is why there are also fire rating requirements to protect specific building elements. The building code is specific to the types of systems that are most important for fire life safety. Amongst those systems, the list includes the structural frame, bearing walls, floor systems, and roof systems. It is impossible to make a building fireproof. Not to mention, there are other types of emergencies that may happen, such as earthquakes, hurricanes, etc. But the building code reasonably gives priority to those systems. Amongst other things, this level of protection will provide sufficient time to allow for one, people to evacuate the building, and two, give time for emergency respondents to arrive at the scene and provide rescue assistance. Now that you have that in mind, understanding the concept of the building types should be somewhat easy to understand. The International Building Code. Which is what most states in the U.S. base their respective codes on, basically tells us that there are five types of buildings: Type One, Type Two, Type Three, Type Four, and Type Five. And each building type has options of A or B, with option A being more restrictive. Using this analogy, you can assume that building type One A is the most restrictive, and type Five B is the least restrictive. Both. In terms of construction material allowances and rating requirements, you can see the fire rating requirements of each building type in the IBC Table 601. I encourage you to read your state's building code. It is very probable that the sections of the IBC I'm showing you here match the same sections within your state's building code, but you would have to confirm that on your own. In a nutshell. IBC Section 602.2 tells us that Type One and Type Two buildings are those buildings whose construction is composed of the ratings in Table 601 and is limited to the use of non-combustible materials. IBC Section 602.3 tells us that Type Three buildings are those whose construction is composed of exterior walls that are non-combustible materials, and the interior elements are of any material. Permitted by the building code, IBC Section 602.4 tells us that Type Four buildings are mainly for heavy timber constructions, and IBC Section 602.5 tells us that Type Five buildings are buildings whose construction is composed of any material permitted by the building code. In my last video, I talked about how building types and building occupancy uses go hand in hand. And here is where it all comes together. This may seem like a silly question, but why would anyone be willing to spend major costs on a building that is constructed with steel and concrete versus the less expensive wood framing, for example? Well, it comes to three factors. 
One, how tall of a building does the client want? How many stories do they wish the building to have? Two, how much square footage would they like to have per floor? And three, what type of occupancy is planned for the building? An A occupancy will have more people when compared to a B occupancy. If you missed my video on occupancy types, you must watch it to make sense of this. I will place a link to it in this video's description below. Once you know how tall, how much square footage, and what your building will be used for, then you can see what building type you will need to design. IBC Table 503 will show you a table that will help you decide which building type to use based on these factors. I hope you made it through this entire video. I know it was long, but there was a lot of information to pack in it. If you liked it, and if it helped you, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out. Till next time.